morning, friends, and welcome to another week of Bible stories on here. I'm so excited that you guys decided to join me. So this whole month, we've had, we've started to uncover all the ways that we can be creative and seeing how God wants us to use our creativity in the world around us. What is creativity? Creativity is imagining what you could do because you're made in God's image. God's creativity is limitless. And since we're made in God's image, we can be creative too. Just look at God's creation. He made some pretty crazy and amazing things, didn't he? And sometimes even the things that we think are pretty obvious or normal have a purpose that we couldn't, that we wouldn't expect. For example, did you know that dogs have really loose skin? Any idea why? Well, have you ever seen a dog, a wet dog? If you have, you might know why the loose skin is helpful. A wet dog can shake off 70% of the water from its fur in just four seconds because the loose skin moves so fast. Or what about another one of God's creations, the butterfly? Did you know butterflies have feet? But they don't use their feet for walking like we do. Does anyone know what they use their feet for? Hmm, let's look at this. Butterflies have feet so that they can taste their food. Their feet have special sensors that allow them to taste anything that they land on. Crazy, right? God's creativity is really mind-blowing. It's indescribable. And since God made us to be like him, we can be, be creative too. Isn't that awesome? God made everything that we can see, including each one of us. And it gets even better because he made human beings to know him. God wants a relationship with each and every one of us. And when we get to know God better, we can follow his plan for our lives. He wants us to follow him because he can see things that we can't see. And listen to these words that God spoke through the prophet Isaiah. This comes from Isaiah 55, chapter 55, verses 8 through 9. And it says, My thoughts are not like your thoughts, and your ways are not like my ways, announces the Lord. The heavens are higher than the earth, and my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. Wow. Our God is good, and we can trust him no matter what. It's true. We can trust God no matter what. We can trust his plans for our lives, but that can be a little tricky, can it? I mean, since we don't always know what the big plans that God has for us. Esther's story is a great example of how God can work through, um, through us in unexpected ways. We can read Esther's story in the Bible. Does anyone know where Esther's story comes from? It comes from the book of Esther. Now remember, I'm not going to read the whole story from the Bible word for word, but instead I'm going to read some bits and pieces of it, but I'm also going to um, put it in my own words. So I encourage you guys to go back with your parents or your siblings this week um, and to read over the book of Esther. It's a really cool story. So Esther was the queen of Persia, but she didn't become queen in the usual way. Her father wasn't a king, and she wasn't from an important family. In fact, Esther was Jewish, and many of God's people had been captured and brought to Babylon when their home, Judah, was conquered. Then Babylon was taken over by Persia. So Esther grew up in a land, um, Persia, and it was, that wasn't her own. When Esther's parents died, her cousin Mordecai raised her as his own daughter. At the time our story takes place, a man named Xerxes was king of Persia. Xerxes got angry and he fired his queen, Vashti, simply because she refused to show up for a wild party. After that, the king decided to hold a contest to find a new queen, and he ordered his officials to gather the most beautiful young women throughout the whole empire, one of whom was Esther. Mordecai warned Esther not to tell anyone that she was from a Jewish family. The king ordered that the young women should be put through an entire year of beauty treatments. But once the year was finished up, the king began to have the young women brought to him one at a time. When the king saw Esther, he liked her more than any of the others, and he chose her as queen in place of Vashti. King Xerxes also raised up a royal official named Haman to be, the high, to be higher than any of the other nobles. Since Haman had such an important position, 
all of the other royal officials were supposed to bow down to him. There was one man who refused to bow to Haman. Do you guys have a clue who it was? It was Mordecai. Mordecai knew that he shouldn't he should only bow down to God and not a person. Some of the other officials told Haman about this and Haman was mad. He found out that Mordecai was Jewish and he made a plan to destroy not only Mordecai, but also all the other Jewish people in the land. Haman went to King Xerxes and Haman told the king um, that there was a group of people who lived there separately from, any, from everyone else in the kingdom and that they didn't obey the king's laws. Haman offered to destroy this group of people for the king. King Xerxes agreed and he sent out the decree. The order decreed that all the Jewish people must be killed. Oh no. Mordecai and all the Jewish people throughout the kingdom were terrified. Queen Esther had heard Mordecai was upset, so she sent one of her servants to find out what was wrong and what was going on. The servant returned with a message from Mordecai, which explained all that Haman had done. All of the Jewish people were soon to be killed, and Mordecai wanted Esther to do something about it. He asked her to go before the king and beg him to save their people. Esther responded to Mordecai. She reminded him of the law and that no one could go before the king unless the king was sent, sent for them first. So if Esther approached the king without being summoned, she could get killed unless the king reached out his golden scepter to save her. Mordecai had another message for Esther. Listen to what he said. We're going to read from Esther 4, chapter 4, verse 14. What if you don't say anything at this time? Then help for the Jews will come for, from another place. Who knows? It's possible that you became queen for a time just like this. Esther realized that Mordecai was right, and so she sent another message to him. She asked him to gather the Jewish people and to tell them not to eat anything for three days. And she said that her attendants would do the same thing, and then she would go to the king. On the third day, Queen Esther put on her royal robes and entered the throne, the throne room. And shocker, King Xerxes wasn't mad. He was happy to see Esther. He reached out toward her with his golden scepter. King Xerxes told Esther that he would give her anything up to the half of the kingdom. But Esther's request was simple. She invited the king and Haman to, to a feast. Esther didn't make her plea to the king right away. She knew that she would have a better chance if she made the king curious. Sure enough, at that meal, King Xerxes again tried to discover what Esther wanted. But Esther held her ground, waiting for the perfect moment. She invited the king and Haman to come to another feast the next day. Then she'd answer. The king agreed, and the men left. Finally, at that meal, Esther revealed her request to the king. She told King Xerxes about the evil plot to kill off her people. The king demanded to know who would do such a thing. Esther told him it was Haman, and the king was furious. And that very night, Haman was killed. King Xerxes then created a new order that saved the Jewish people. Esther wasn't the most likely choice to become queen of Persia, but God had a very important purpose for her. When the time was right, she used the position God had given her as a queen to save her people. God has a purpose for each one of us too, and you might not always be able to see exactly what it is, but you can trust that God does have a purpose for you. There's a reason why he put you with people that you see every day. There's a reason why he's given you gifts and talents and opportunities, and of course, your creativity so that you can make a difference in our world. Remember, God created you for a purpose. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for blessing us with creativity, God, and giving us each different um, talents and different ideas, Lord, that help make this world a better place. Please um, let us use our talents for good, God, and to be able to shine uh, for you, Lord. And please bless this week that uh, we have coming up and please bless everyone watching and who's not watching, Lord. 
and just thank you for everything that you do, God. And um, please bless everyone and let them all have a great day. In God's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much for watching another Bible story with me. And I hope to see some of you at church. If I do see you guys, make sure you come back and find me and get a busy bag. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.